So now let's go over treatment of the rotator cuff muscles. And I want to go over several aspects of this. Obviously, we're going to go over four different muscle groups here. But at the same time, we're going to take into consideration the integration of traditional Chinese medicine, so some acupuncture points, areas where there's fascial thickening about 90% of the time on the extremity, there's a correlation between the acupuncture point and the thickening, where you get 10 times the amount of neurological receptors going in the area. And then we're going to talk about some of the correlations with the osseous structures, both spinal manipulation and the peripheral joints. So first let's get on to the supraspinatus muscle. Now, the origin insertion, the supraspinatus muscle, the origin is the supraspinatus fossa of the scapula, right across up here. And it basically, it goes from the fossa to the greater tubercle of the humerus. So right across and down the front here. Now, we've done several videos on the rotator cuff, so I'm not going to go into too much detail, but I want to see, show you in general some of the things we can do here. Take this down. Cross. You okay there? Oh yeah. Back up. So I'm backing this up a bit. Now, stay there. Now go into circumduction a bit. There we go. You don't even really feel it until you start moving around there, do you? Oh, and all of a sudden that changes everything. So the innervation for the super is the suprascapular nerve for the supraspinatus muscle. So that would be C5, C6. Doing okay? Oh yeah. Right. So let's move on to the infraspinatus muscle. It's basically from the in infraspinatus fossa of the scapula to the greater tubercle of the humerus. So we go here and the fossa is down here. I'm going to get you to bring your arm up here. And then I'm going to get you to take the arm forward, straight over. You okay? Mm -hmm. And take it down like this, right over. So we're talking about the innervation for the Infraspinatus muscle is the suprascapular nerve, which would be C5, C6. How's that feeling there? That's good. Yeah. And if you're using your forearm like this, I'm not using my elbow. In a fairly large area here. Good. And now I want you to take this and just go straight forward like that. So I'm going to move over more to the tears minor. And basically, it runs from the lateral border of the scapula to the lower set of the greater tubercle of the humerus. So take it forward, right there. <laughs> really feeling that one, aren't you? Oh, big time. Yeah. In terms of the teres minor, we're talking about innervation from the axillary nerve. So C5, C6. Good. Doing okay there? Mm -hmm. Now, take it forward. Now, take your arm into circumduction. So go more a little bit the other way now. Yes, yeah, I'm right more medial. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> you can just feel that change, can't you? And let's take this one here. Now go back onto the infra. Take it over here. Good. Now, all right. Doing okay? Mm -hmm. yeah, I'll just give you a little assistance on that one. <laughs> Doing okay there? Oh, yeah. But you feel quite a difference when I put that circumduction in there, don't you? Definitely. All right. Good. So for the fourth muscle here, I'd like to get on the subscapularis. You okay there, Mickey? Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So this is the largest rotator cuff muscle, and it's responsible for internal rotation of the arm and for shoulder stability. So I'm going to get on there. I'm not using my fist. I'm taking my hand fairly flat, taking it in. You okay? Yeah. Yeah, wonderful. Thanks for asking. And this originates from the subscapular fossa to the lesser tubercle of the humerus. Good. And again, I'm almost immediately taking it into circumduction. I'm actually going to bring it back a little bit without circumduction. You okay? <laughs> and down. And then some circumduction. How does it change with circumduction? It's, it's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it changes a lot, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. So in terms of innervation, this is the upper and lower subscapular nerve that innervates the subscapularis muscle. This would be C5 to C7. Good. So there's multiple acupuncture points I could actually work on using acupressure for the rotator cuff, but I'm just going to go over a couple here. So I want to first look at small intestine 15. It's on the upper back, two tune lateral to the lower border of C7. If you'd like to learn more about small intestine 15, we have a specific video on this particular one. Now, let's just move over here, look at the vertebral prominence, go to the lower border of C7, right across, and it's about right there. You okay there, Mickey? Yes. 
Okay. So I want you to go clockwise, counterclockwise, but I also want you to get on this point and really work it out for about 30 seconds to three minutes. How's that feeling there? That's tight. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I'm just gonna get in there and really knead it out here a bit. Doing okay there? Oh, yeah. So don't just barely touch the area or lightly, you know, do a little bit of pressure in there, but get in and work that area up because we're talking about fascial restrictions. We're talking about areas where there could be an area of influence that's a lot larger than just the point itself. Doing okay there? Oh, yeah. Good. So the next point I wanna go over is small intestine 10. We're gonna follow the scapular spine over here and then we're just gonna go a little bit inferior to it and about right here. You okay there, Mickey? Oh yeah. Feeling that right there? Yes. <laughs> so as we get on these points, you may be saying what influence is gonna happen, have, excuse me, have on the shoulder. Basically, it's gonna increase mobility, it's gonna to help to diminish tension in the entire area. You okay? Mm -hmm. And it'll affect not only the posterior of the shoulder, but also anterior. So it, it'll be an influence over the entire area because we have direct fascial connections there. Good. Doing okay there? Oh yeah. Another common area, which I commonly would integrate in here, would maybe go on to large intestine four, around here and get in at the same time. Doing okay? Mm -hmm. And again, each of these areas, you wanna be you know, getting in there for 30 seconds to three minutes, just depending upon the tension that you're feeling. Is that pretty tense in there? Yep. Quite a bit. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So one thing I wanna mention here while we're dealing with the rotator cuff is do not just stick with the soft tissue. Take a look at, in terms of other spinal restrictions, because this is going to affect the mobility of the shoulder. We should get a nice two to one ratio in terms of the scapular and the humerus, the nice delight in there. But if we have restrictions of the thoracic spine, this is going to inhibit that motion. Also the glenohumeral joint, the AC joint, the sternoclavicular joint. You have to take a look at all of these. Mickey, I'm just gonna take a look at your mid-back. You okay with that? Yeah. All right. And up here, and of course, I found a restriction here. Take down, lift your hand up. There we go. A little release there. A little more. Good. Now I could definitely work my way around, getting on to just checking in terms of you know humeral joint, looking at internal rotation, crunch, crunch, <laughs> <laughs> external, trying to get some good fluidity there. Checking the AC joint here. No problem there. No. Okay. Go over the clavicle. No problem there. Okay. okay, so I got a nice response. Just moving well there. Good. So make sure you check out these osseous structures.